This video is not actually going to be a soup recipe. It's about a technique that I use when I'm refurbishing axes and other vintage tools to convert active red rust into stable black ferric tannate. This chemical process is the same one that occurs with some commercial rust converters and museums use it to preserve and protect iron and steel artifacts and trappers use it to refurbish their traps to get them ready for the subsequent season using a process called trap dyeing. And I'm basically going to be doing a home version of the trap dyeing process because it's cheap and easy and I actually like the results I get from it better than what I've been able to achieve using rust converters. Now there's lots of ways to deal with rust. You can use rust removers like vinegar or evaporust. You can scour it away with a wire wheel and WD-40. You can use electrolysis and the best method depends on what you have available and the effect you're trying to achieve if you're trying to do a polish or a pit and polish or whatever. This method is the one that I use when I want to preserve as much of the patina as possible and I want it to look nice and I want it to have a durable coat that is protective as long as you oil it um, if you're using the tool outside or you're storing it for a long time. So if that sounds good to you, I hope you'll find this video interesting and useful. I've collected a bunch of bark from buckthorn, uh, which is an invasive species, so I don't mind chopping it down. Uh, and it seems to work. I make sure to get the cambi cambium layer, the inner bark on the inside, which in buckthorn is quite orange. And I'm running in this rainwater uh, from a rain barrel. And uh, that is the start of the process. Um, I'm gonna do the tannin extraction tonight. All right, I've got my rainwater and buckthorn bark tannin tea heating up on my kitchen stove. What I'm gonna do is, I'm not gonna do the ax head treatment tonight. I'm just going to bring this to a boil and let it sit in the hot water overnight. And that is gonna result in a good extraction based on my past experience. If you're using something like tea bags or, or tannin powder, uh, that extraction is very fast or instantaneous. And so you don't have to worry about this step, but this seems to work well for bark which takes a little bit longer to get the tannins out. So that's what I'm doing. And tomorrow I will see how the extraction went, at least what I can tell from the color of the water. Here it is, this is going to be the test ax. This is a Michigan. I can't see any stamps, maybe some will appear, but it looks like a, a kind of a no-name Michigan, but it looks good, high center line, chunky, a lot of rust in the eye, a lot of rust everywhere. This was actually kicked out of the dirt uh, on the farm. And so I'm gonna see if I can get it to look cool. So first uh, step is to brush the loose rust off. I've got a drill with a fine uh, steel cup, steel wire cup, and that's the first thing that I'm gonna do. Uh, besides <laughs> peen, um, there's just a slight mushrooming. I already peened it over. So then the next step is to, is to use this. there actually is a stamp i don't think it'll ever look good but i know what it is because uh joey hamilton uh gifted me one of these that wasn't is in much better shape than this this is a lion brand which was well in veil and later uh true temper canada's um brand of axes i thought it might be because i kind of recognize uh these bevels here so i'm gonna see if i can clean up that stamp a little bit but i don't want to ruin the effect that's sort of the point of the video so uh, i'm not going to take all the rust off here's a lion brand axe that's a little less corroded this is the one that joey gave me and you can see what this stamp is meant to look like so that's as much rust as i'm going to take off i think that's all i need to take off uh, for this um, there is a bunch of loose crud in the eye, so I still have to get that. I'm going to use this uh, steel wire brush to get that, but um, that's that's as much cleanup, I think, as I'm going to do. Uh, besides, I am going to do a bit of degreasing just with some dish soap and water right before I start the tannin treatment. All right, let's have a look. It's the next day. Oh, it looks like some good tea. That's pretty dark. That'll work. So I'm just going to take out... Uh, some of the bark to make room for the axe and I'm going to start heating it up. So I'm just going at this with a dish soap and a bristle brush. You can also use uh, he more heavy duty degreasers if you think it needs it. I don't think this one does. I think for most situations dish soap is enough, uh, but it's probably a good idea to be reasonably thorough with it. So that's what I'm going to do. 
All right, I'm about to put it into the boiling tannin solution. The thing that I've done off camera is I've reprofiled the bit uh, to sort out the toe jam, the worn toe, uh, so that it's more in line with what I think it should be. And then I've also put a little bit of rust bluing solution and rusted out the shiny spots where I peened the pole, where it had mushroomed a little bit. And now it's ready to go in. So uh, I've got a string attached to it just through the eye. That just makes it easier to handle. And here it goes. Whoops. All right, then crank this up and bring it to a boil. Maybe an hour, maybe half an hour. Uh, I'll check it at half an hour. All right, let's have a look at this. You probably can't see because of all the steam, but it looks pretty good. So I'm going to take it out now. Oh yeah, there you go. That looks pretty dark. So I'm gonna hang this up by the string in the garage and give it time to dry out while it's still hot. And then we'll proceed with some oil and see how it came out. All right, so this is what it looks like after doing the one ax. As you can see, it's starting to get kind of blackish green. And if you keep using it, it will eventually turn just opaque black. And that's because uh, that's basically how you make ink is you mix iron and tannin. Old fashioned gall ink is uses oak gall as a tannin source and, and iron. And so you have to be careful because it does stain. Uh, but yeah, this is this is still good for a few more axes or, you know, I, I might just throw it out because it's essentially free for me. So I'm out of the tannin bath. It's had a chance to dry for a couple hours. I think it's important to get the water out uh, that's left in the patina before you put oil in and trap it in there. So I give it enough time to do that while it's hot. Um, if if you rinse it off in water, so I'm gonna I'm gonna gonna clean it with WD-40 here and some of the supplies I've got. If you decide to clean it in water after, that'll cool the head down and you're gonna wanna put it in like a warm oven or something uh, to make sure it gets all the way dry. Uh, but as I said, I'm gonna use a little bit of WD-40, scrub around. I've got just a nylon scrub brush and some uh, double lot steel wool and a rag. And all I'm just doing is getting whatever crud is stuck to it from the bark and uh, any rust that loosened up that will come off, which uh, and any of the tannin deposits. So it. As you do this, especially if you've done a few axes in the same broth, it will deposit black ferric tannate on things without actually, you know, it won't be stuck. So if you have bare steel, in my experience, uh, what will happen is that it will get a black layer on it, but that just rubs off. And so I want to see what I'm left with besides stuff that's just kind of casually sticking. I want to see what's actually durable so i'm going to take things off that are not whatever comes off with the brush the eye. steel wool or, uh, is also useful um, but you want to go easy because of course steel wool will eventually take off the patina so, uh, i use a fine grade of it the, the double zero WD-40 is not necessarily the best oil for protecting the head, uh, but it's pretty good for cleaning. I'll put some heavier oil on after. You can use boiled linseed oil or grease or wax. All right, I think that's looking pretty good. Now I've ground a bevel into it. It's not quite sharp yet, but otherwise this is how it's going to look. This is the finished ax showing uh, the ferric tannate patina that is left after the tannin treatment. And I think it looks pretty good. Um, nice and black, stable. Uh, there you can read the, well, you can see that there's a stamp there. <laughs> Probably, no matter what I did, you wouldn't really be able to read it. But I know what it is, Lion Brand. And this is a pretty nice axe, I think, and it turned out quite well. The eye also got all the rust in the eye. You probably can't see that, but the eye is also nice and um, uh, blackened. And it doesn't have any loose rust left on it. So 
yeah, this is uh, ready to be hung. And once that's done, ready to be swung. And I think it turned out uh, quite nicely. I am quite enamored of this technique. This is the finished axe, and I want to compare it to a couple others that I've done in past years that I wasn't totally satisfied with how they turned out and why I've been looking for other methods. The first one is this one. This is a great user axe, and I used it all the time back before I broke the handle, and I still have to replace the handle. But um, it swings great. It doesn't look that great, in my opinion. I was a little disappointed. I used a wire cup and WD-40 uh, to take the rust off, and I, what I wanted to do was leave the patina and most of the paint and I ended up taking most of the patina and most of the paint off, trying to get the rust. I still didn't quite get it all out of there. And so, um, yeah, just not uh, not my favorite look. I, I'm sure some of you have ideas about how I could fix this up, and I have a couple too, but I haven't done it. But the main thing is, is that I didn't preserve the things I wanted to preserve, uh, chasing the rust off. So a little disappointed in, in the looks of this one. And then here's a couple that I did the vinegar bath. I don't know, it seems like everybody does that when I first when they first start, and I did too. Uh, vinegar bath, and then I tried to uh, rust blue them to get something like a patina back. And it's not it's not as dark, it's not as heavy, but the thing that really annoys me about this, and I'm gonna switch to a zoomed in view. Looking at it close up, I hope you guys can see why I'm dissatisfied with the results that I get from vinegar and other rust removers that work like vinegar, because not only do, do they dissolve the rust, but they also dissolve all the patina and empty out these little pits left from rusting. And so you're left with these little sharp edged craters that collectively kind of make a foamy texture on the steel. And the result of that, of course, is that when you use it, you collect all sorts of residue, gunk, crud in there. It's hard to keep clean. If you don't keep it clean, then it'll start rusting again inside those pits. And you, it'll just make that situation worse. Plus, I'm not very satisfied with the appearance. From far away, it looks okay, but in the hand, it's not great. Um, and so now uh, I'm glad that I know what I wish I knew then when I did this ax and this little hammer which is um, other methods, including the tannic acid technique to preserve the patina and, and get a better outcome. So. To wrap up the video, I thought I'd talk about some of the other projects I've done uh, with this technique besides just this ax here. So one of the things about this ax, it was very heavily rusted as you saw, and the same is true with this little uh, shingling hatchet and this adds. And so had I just wire wheeled them, uh, it probably would have turned out pretty nicely because if you have a thick layer of rust, that usually means there's a decently heavy magnetite patina underneath that you can expose by wire wheeling. I do think that this actually might be easier. Um, and the, the other thing I wanted to say is that the tannic acid treatment might actually be most useful when you, actually, when you don't have that much rust. So for example, this little um, mini mall had you know, it had rust, but it wasn't really heavy rust or pitting. And so if I had of just wire wheeled it, I would have just taken all the patina off and been left with bare steel, except for, you know, some of the pits and cracks and stuff. And so this way I got to keep the whole patina. It was easier. I just basically threw this in and took it out and I was done. So I think it worked quite well uh, for this project. It works well in that sort of scenario. And then it's also nice for axes where you want to restore them, keep the patina, and also save the paint. So uh, cleaning it with a wire wheel or cup would, you know, getting all the rust off would also take off a bunch of the paint, and then it would leave some bare steel, which, you, you know, I don't think looks good. You may or may not um, agree, but either way, this keeps all the patina and the paint. One issue is that especially if you've done a few axes with one batch, it tends to, and the, the water gets really black, it tends to darken the paint up a bit. Um, you can put this in clean boiling water after, and that will re-brighten the paint, I found. So with this little sand hatchet, I think it turned out quite nicely. And then this Walters uh, little pulp, uh, small size pulpwood axe. I wanted to keep uh, the green paint that was left, so uh, that worked out well, and then I find that um, 
when you have bare steel and you boil it in the tannin solution, you tend to get, I mean, you get a black coating, but that wipes off. And then what you're left with is a gray patina, similar to what you get out of vinegar. And so in this case, what I did was um, I just buffed it up a little bit with some uh, fine grit sandpaper uh, to, to brighten up and bring it how, out how it was. So when I started this, that's basically what this looked like, except that it had some brown and red rust instead of the black patina. So I think it looks better now. I'm happy with how that turned out. And I'm not going to use this technique for every project. I mean, <laughs> right now I am because I'm testing it out and I, I really am enamored with it. But um, I'm not going to use it for every project, but I'm glad I have it in my repertoire. And I hope that it's useful uh, for some of you that are watching this video. And so that's why I shared it. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And uh, good luck and uh, have fun with your axes.